it was life or death for these plot points, and some just didn't make it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 differences between the 100 books and TV series. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most noteworthy events and characters left out, added, or changed for the TV adaptation. Since we'll be going over the plots of both the novels and series, we're instating a spoiler alert from here on in. Number 10. Clark's Parents Hey, baby. Hi. Clark's relationship with her parents is a sore point in both the books and show. In the show, only Clark's mother remains alive, having ratted out her father for treason, a source of ongoing conflict between mother and daughter. What I did to Finn was nothing like what you did to him. Don't do this now, Clark. I was protecting everyone. I didn't have a choice. You did. No. You turned him in. But in the source material, both her parents were apparently executed, after the vice chancellor forced them to conduct illegal radiation experiments on children. We later learn in the book that Jaha Sr. actually had them surreptitiously transported down to Earth, and that both are alive and well. Everything okay? Oh, yeah. You know, this old boat. It's always something. Number 9. Mount Weather friend or foe. Welcome to Mount Weather. Hold up in Mount Weather Emergency Operation Center, a few humans survive the nuclear apocalypse that takes place before the series begins. And in the books, these Earthborn actually protect the Hundred from a hostile renegade faction. With help from Clark and company, the Mount Weatherites then defend themselves against the real villain, Vice Chancellor Rhodes, who was likely the basis of the characters Marcus Kane and Charles Pike in the adaptation. <laughs> But the TV series turns this all on its head. <laughs> Unable to leave Mount Weather due to the radiation outside, the Earthborn survivors hold the Hundred prisoner in an attempt to harvest their radiation resistant bone marrow in gruesome experiments. No one has to die for bone marrow! We can donate it! We can donate it. Number 8 New Characters. What are you doing here? We're not leaving you behind. Fans of the show who haven't read the books might be surprised to learn that pivotal characters Raven, Finn, Murphy, Jasper, and Monty are all unique to the TV series. We find the truth. How do we do that? We're criminals, right? So let's be criminals. In some cases, elements of their roles or personalities are based on characters found in the novels. For example, Lincoln, another original character, replaces an Earthborn girl from the books called Sasha who, like him, forms a relationship with one of the hundred. Here, take this. Hey, I will be right back. Lexa, on the other hand, the badass grounder commander, who has an all-too-brief relationship with Clark, wasn't in the books at all, but still managed to make a huge impact with viewers. Maybe someday you and I will owe nothing more to our people. I hope so. Number 7. Octavia's Past Octavia, what the hell are you doing? In both the books and the show, Octavia is an illegal second child who grows up hidden by the family. But in the books, it gets a whole lot darker. We can't swim! No, but we can stand. <laughs> Fearing execution, her own mother tries to strangle her to death, then commits suicide while the traumatized Octavia becomes addicted to sleeping pills in an orphanage. The bond between Octavia and her brother Bellamy is still just as strong, but tested when she steals medicine from camp supplies. How do I look? <laughs> Mysterious. Oh, also, she's 14 years old. So the whole leaving innocence behind with sexy swims and sex with muscle-bound warriors is not a thing. Number 6. Missing in Action We're back, Some notable characters didn't make it from page to screen. The action of the books is told through the eyes of four main point-of-view characters. Clark, Wells, Bellamy, and Glass, a delinquent who escapes the dropship that sends the Hundred to Earth. Hey, you two, stay put if you want to live! Glass provides perspective on events in the space colony throughout the first and second books, but is missing from the show. As is her love interest Luke, Clark's best friend Thalia, and thugs Graham and Asher. To an extent, 
Raven takes over from Glass and Luke. Remaining on the Ark for a few episodes after the launch of the dropship, and possessing Luke's mechanical expertise. Talk to us, Raven. We're not going anywhere. Number five, the many faces of Bellamy Blake. This is home now. Your father's rules no longer apply. In the show, Bellamy is an ambivalent character, whose pragmatic and ruthless actions are sometimes an asset to the hundred, but at other times lead him down dark and bloody roads. You can stop this. Stop this? I'm just getting started. His human side comes through primarily in his dedication to his sister, Octavia. Every stupid thing you did it was to protect your sister. She didn't always see that, but I did. But in the books, although Bellamy is still hot-headed, He's also more of a sympathetic character, and even a bit of a ladies' man. In fact, he's part of a love triangle involving himself, Wells, who turns out to be his half-brother, and Clark. Yep, Bellark is a real thing. People follow you. You inspire them because of this. But the only way to make sure we survive is if you use this too. Number four, Wells is still alive. I don't care what he tells you. We won't survive here on our own. Wells is a main character throughout the novels, as well as leader of the Hundred and Clark's on-again, off-again beau in the first book. And besides, if it really is safe, how could you not want the rest of our people to come down? He and Clark dated up in the space colony before Wells's actions led to her parents' supposed execution. He then sabotaged the whole space station to save Clark from the same fate. I had a nightmare. Hmm. You know what? I have them every night, but I think I found a way to make him stop. In other words, Wells is an important character, so readers of the books were pretty shocked when he was killed off in the show's third episode, leaving Clark and Bellamy to fill his shoes as leaders, and Octavia rather than Wells, to get all romantic with the Hundreds Grounder prisoner. Sorry. <laughs> Number three, Allie and the City of Light. Allie, the artificial intelligence responsible for the nuclear Armageddon that scoured the Earth, is the arch villain of season three. But she actually doesn't appear in the books at all. Working through erstwhile Chancellor and now fanatic disciple Thelonious Jaha, Allie seeks to induct the survivors into a virtual world to wait out a second nuclear disaster. So you see, the City of Light is the only thing that can save you. She confronts Clark and company with a difficult choice. A painless life of peace and pleasure inside a shared simulation, or the freedom to experience suffering too. The right to be unhappy and to make mistakes in the real world. In the City of Light, you don't have to bear the burden of decisions like this one, Clark. Number two, the war between grounders and sky people. The clash between the survivors of the Ark and the Earthborn Grounders is one of the driving conflicts of the show. You're the one who burned 300 of my warriors alive. You're the one who sent them there to kill us. It allows the series to dramatize familiar themes relating to colonialism, discrimination, and how fear can fan hostilities and encourage the rise of despots. This land is ours now! While this is also seen in the books, when a renegade faction of Earthborn attacks the Hundred and the colonists turn on the survivors in Mount Weather, the war between the colonists and the grounders takes on a more central role in the adaptation, providing space for new plot lines and characters, and fleshing out the post-apocalyptic world of the series. The Sky People march with us now. Anyone who tries to stop that will pay with their life. Number one, Clark Griffin. Earth Clark. You get to go to Earth. In the show, Clark is the clear protagonist of the series, a fearless heroine and leader of the Hundred. This is actually an upgrade from the books, where she's one of four main characters and takes on less of a leadership role. I have to go into the City of Light and find the kill switch. Her early love interests include Wells rather than Finn, and both her parents are still alive. In focusing more on Clark, the adaptation is able to follow her journey through a post-apocalyptic world with more detail and breadth, and just make her generally more badass. I have to save them. Together. 
she also has relationships with women as well as men, making her the first bisexual main character on the CW television network. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.